Hello and welcome to um, Plan View Diagram using AutoCAD and Photoshop. Um, so what we need to do first is go to Blackboard and um, open it up and go to Assignments and download a base model. So we're, we're all working with the same thing. So I'm going to open the base model. Okay, so now that I have the base model open, um, you'll notice that it should open up to the plan diagram page, which is what we need. Um, we're going to add some labels to this, and then we're going to separate this and print it in pieces, layers, as PDFs, and then we're going to reassemble it and render it in Photoshop um, to create an illustrative plan view diagram. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm on my Anno labels um, layer, and type in just leader. I'm just going to label some of these items in here that I, I know I have, like these, you know, make sure I know what those actually are, what did we call those before, important to be consistent, and I call those steel bands, okay, so here, um, plan diagram, I'll call them steel bands, let me delete that one and just do another one, and call this a steel band. Uh, keep on going. Call this my stone bench. Um, this and call it stone pavers. Um, and concrete walkway. And that's pretty good for me. We'll just add those few labels just to help you understand how you apply these um, elements. So that's done. Now what we want to do is um, begin to separate these things in, into um, different layers. And the first thing that I'm going to do is, is are, are my uh, labels. So I'm just going to do a lay ISO and hit that. And then I'm going to control P and print this. And I'm going to save it as a PDF. You should be printing it to DWG to PDF. I'm going to save it as a PDF. And I'm going to go to my desktop and um, I'm going to go to Photoshop. And you should create, and I'll do this again, I'll create a new folder, and I'll call it um, Plan View Diagram Illustration. And in this, I will, I'll create a um, PDF base layers. And I'll call this one Labels. Okay, that'll print off. We'll turn everything back on. I'm going to turn my labels off. And I also want to, um, so now I want to focus on my, on my hardscapes. So I'm going to go to my proposed um, layers and go and turn off all of my land layers. So I'm left with my paving, my paving and my site furnishing basically. Um, I also don't need to see any context. So I'll turn off my context edge as well. And the striping. Okay. So that's what I'm left with. Now, I want to make sure, click on this, this um, viewport and right click and make sure that your display is locked. Yes. Okay. I'm going to double click in here and temporarily, I'm going to click on this line. And under my properties menus, I'm going to make it, um, instead of by layer, I'm going to say continuous. Because we need that to be solid for Photoshop for a minute. Um, and I'm almost also going to turn off the hatch layer. I don't need the hatches for this. So I'm going to go on my PR and the um, paving and turn off the hatch. I don't need that. And everything else I'll leave. I'll leave on the site furnishings as well for this one. And then I'll control P. Oh, actually, apologize. Let me also take off the control joints. We'll do those separately. 
and control P. And we will um, save as PDF. Should go to the last place you were, and then this will be edges and site furnishing. All right. And now I want to turn off those. Um, site furnishing pieces and the railroad tie and the stone bench um, and my proposed edge and I'm going to have on my um, my joints and I'll turn off really doesn't matter but we'll we'll just print that like that that's fine um, I'll say save as PDF, and these will be um, whether they're just score score joints. Okay, score joints, and that should be good for that. So now let me turn that off, and I want to go back up to the or click on this rather that line and put it back on by layer, and I'm going to Control P that as well. And make sure also that you're using your pen settings so that it's printing black and not in color. And you can download that CTB from either the YouTube um, more information underneath the video or from the Blackboard page. So that and I'm going to save this PDF. I'm going to call this um, Design Extents. <clears throat> Spell yours right if you can. That'll kick out. And um, so I'm going to keep on going now. So now I'm going to fly. I have my hardscapes pretty much laid out. I'm not going to worry about my hatches um, and my edges and have my site furnishings. What I want to worry about now are my plant materials. Okay, so I'm going to start turning those pieces on. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that design extents. I don't need that layer now. I'm just going to focus on my land layers. So the first thing I'm going to do are, now, and you notice that also I've um, broken down the plant materials into their, own, into their own specific layers and blocks, right? So not only does a plant, now depending on the size of your planning list, this can get pretty big. This is a, is a smaller design, so it's a, I think it's more appropriate, but it does make it easier to render this in Photoshop. So if you have a small design um, and not a whole lot of uh, program elements, um, specifically plant material elements, then I would highly recommend creating sub layers or layers for each element that you have, each plant material that you have, because it makes it easier to render in Photoshop. All right, so now um, I have my uh, my north wind. I'm just going to kick that out. So Control P, um, save as PDF, and I'm going to say uh, this is going to be planting. So I know PL, and this is going to be my north wind. Okay. I'm going to turn those off. Turn the next one on my Hamlin. So those are Control P. All right. Um, I'm going to keep going. Go to my next one. Long, I don't either. I'm not going to worry about the hatches. So I'm going to go to these perennials. So, LP. This is PO. I think this is Joe Pi, right? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to keep going. I like Spamatory, uh, Control P. I like Spamatory, let's keep, keep it going. Turn off the Alex Spamatory. Uh, these are my auto Lucans, so same thing. My autos, and I'm 
down to my trees. So this is gonna be one tree. And this is PIs and my Onyx TT. Alright. And then we go to these Alcobas last. And these are Zelkovo. Okay. Um, from this point, we're ready to go to Photoshop. It was uh, it's pretty much that easy. So you kick all these layers out, and everything's separated. You can turn things, everything back on as it was before. Um, I would save this in your folder um, as a your updated document for the assignment number three. Um, now we're going to go into Photoshop, so I'm going to click on Photoshop. So I wanna, now that I'm here, I'm going to go File, Open. And um, let's go to the Design Extents, and we'll make that our parent layer. Make sure that crop two is selected to media box. Everything else will stay the same. Select OK. It will open up. I'm going to create a new layer here in Photoshop. Create a layer. I'm going to double click here in that layer and say white background. OK. I'm going to go over here to my swatches and just click the swatch pieces to come over to black and white. Bring my white to the foreground. I'm making sure that I'm on the, the white background layer. I'm going to hit Shift F5. Make sure that my use is foreground color and select OK. I'm going to bring it down just so that we can see. I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to say um, Design Extent. And I'm actually going to copy this. I'm going to do a Control A. Control C and then let me oh, zoom back out and Control Shift V to paste it. It's the same layer, and I'm going to call this the um, title block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here to the design extents. I'm going to use my um, polyagonal lasso tool, and I'm going to select around it. Just click around it, double click. I'm going to do a Control Shift I on the PC. I'm going to hit delete. And when I do that, let me zoom out. Sorry about that. When I zoom when I when I do that, it basically deletes all of the title block information. So if I was to turn this off, you'll see that everything is blank on that page now. Where before I had the title block information. That's what we want to do. I also notice that I don't want to see that edge. And it just must have been the landscape edge of context. I just want to delete that. I'm on the title block layer. I hit M for my marquee tool and just drag and click and pull down to delete that. And I'm just gonna delete these stamps to show you just to clean, how you can clean this stuff up pretty easy. If you wanted to. Okay, so there we go. Nice and clean title block now. Nothing's distracting. And I wanna go ahead and control S and save this. And I'm gonna put that in um, desktop in Photoshop. And I'm just going to call it, make sure it's a Photoshop format, and just call this your plan diagram. Okay, it'll save out. Great. Now I'm going to select these two, and I just held shift and shift, and well, I held shift, and while I was on the design extent, and clicked the title block. Now I have them all selected, and I'm going to put them in a group. And I'm going to call that group um, line work. Okay, and actually that didn't go, so I'm just going to shift, select, drag them into that group. Okay, I'm going to make another group since I'm here and call this one color. Okay, great. Save that. Color is going to go below line work, always below line work. So now I'm going to start bringing in my other lines. 
All right, so I have my design extent. Let me actually bring that up. I have my title block. So let me start bringing in other layers. So I'm gonna go Control O, and I'm gonna go to that plan view diagram, PDFs, and um, let me go to, let's grab our edges and site furnishings. Media box should be selected, select OK. I'm just going to select everything, Control A, Control C. I'm going to close it because I don't need it, don't need to save it. Then I'm, gonna, I'm going to go Edit and Paste Special, Paste in Place. And it should drop in. And I'm just going to rename that. I'm going to call that Edges and Site Furniture. Let me zoom in some. OK, great. I'll turn off my design extents for now. I need to see that. And now we have a nice edge. And that's important because it allows us to do this. I'm going to select W for my magic wand. I'm going to make sure that I'm on magic wand and not quick selection just by holding my left click and selecting the appropriate um, icon. So magic wand. Uh, make sure that contiguous is selected. And make sure that you're on your edges and site, furnish, uh, site furniture line work layer. I'm going to click once. You see ants start running around the frame. This area is going to be, going to be a mulch layer, as is this. So I'm going to hold shift. I'll go back to magic wand. I'm going to hold shift and click in this area as well. Now I'm going to go to my color layer, and I'm going to create my first layer in it. Oops. Not that. I create a layer. And I'm going to call that layer mulch. And I'm going to click on my swatches, and I'm just going to grab a brown color for my mulch just to put something down for as a placeholder right now. I'm going to shift F5 foreground color. There goes my mulch area. I'm going to go back to edges, magic wand, same thing. This is going to be a lawn area. I'm going to come over here and create a lawn color. And I'm just going to grab a lawn color. I'm going to my greens and kind of navigating to try to find that color. I typically use this. These are just placeholder colors anyway though. We're going to actually do pattern overlays. So I'm just putting some colors down. It's going pretty quickly. Back in here, this area in here is going to be concrete. So I'm going to come over here and concrete. Click here. It's uh, like a good concrete color to me. And uh, make sure that I'm on my concrete color layer. Shift F5. Okay. So now I have these other areas, these pavers, and I'm going to get those. So I'm going to create a layer because I don't want to individually click on all those cells. And I'm going to call those paver or stone pavers. I'll polyagonal tool. I'm just going to select around this area and double click the end of lawn. And I'm going to grab another color for that. Let's say that it's that color. Let's say it's a little lighter. And um, I'm going to Shift F5, Enter. Now it's filled out a big area, but we're going to clean. We're going to clean that up. Um, I'm on that stone face layer. I'm going to Control click on the layer face of mulch, and it selects everything that's in that layer. Then I'm going to just, I'm on the stone pavers layer, so I'm going to hit delete, and it's going to start deleting some of that, that line work out. Control D to let go. I'm going to do the same thing also with the concrete, and delete, and there we go. So now it's all trimmed up and clean, and we have our paver layers there. Um, all right, Control S for save it. And the next thing that I'm going to do um, is bring over my... Um, Score joints. Okay. And I just need the score joints, so I'm going to use my polyagonal tool. Double click and then just control C, copy, come back over here, and then edit. Um, make sure that I'm in my, my line work layer. And just edit, um, paste special, paste in place. And they should drop in nicely. I'm just going to call that score joints. And then save it. OK. Also, what I want to do is make sure I turn off and kill all of the other information. I'm kind of like information there. So I'm going to go I'm back on my 
um, my edges in site furnishings and I'm going to trace that outline. Control Shift I and just delete all the other information. Okay. Okay. And we're actually going to have to kick out one more layer from AutoCAD, but we'll do that last. Uh, okay, so we got this thing working for us. Um, so now let's go ahead and bring in, let's finish everything before we do that. Open my layers, and I'm going to bring in, really doesn't matter, let's do the trees, I guess, first. So let's do the Zalkova. Okay. Use my marquee tool. All I need are the Zelko. I don't need anything else but the Zelkova, so I'm just going to control C. Don't need that anymore. Don't save. Um, it's going to be my line work. Um, a shortcut to that um, at paste in place is control shift V, so paste in place. And I'm going to call this my um, tree. This is Zelkova. And um, I'm going to hit W for magic wand and my contiguous is selected. I'm going to select in the white space and it's going to select everything on the outside of those trees. Now I'm going to do the control shift I the invert and it's going to give me the color on the inside. So I'm going to go to my colors, create a new layer and I'm going to call this my tree Zocobo. Just grab a color. For now, it doesn't really matter. We'll play, we can tweak this later. And I noticed that I already have an anomaly. The, the tree color should be over top of my lines, and it's not. Um, but we'll, again, we'll fix that when we bring that new layer back in, because we're going to have to change that so it, we don't have that design extents on the exterior. Um, Okay, so that's all good. There's no covers there, and we're just going to keep on going. So control O. And let's bring over the um, Ilex. Why not? Again, all I need is the plant material. Copy. Get rid of this. Don't need it. Make sure I'm uh, uh, these are just do planting, and these are the um, and I'll keep these together, and I'll put a prefix in front of that too. Actually, PL just so I know, just to keep it clean. All right. Same thing for them, so I can do the magic wand and, oops, wrong layer. And the, these are shrubs, so they go below the tree. But select the white space and then control shift I. And um, these are Alex's, so it's kind of like a, so maybe something like, I end up reversing some colors, but we'll go with that for now. Shift F5, just dropping colors in again. We can always tweak these colors after the fact. Oh, and I made a mistake there. Let me Control Z and then Control Alt Z to go back one more time. And I need to create a layer here. And I'm going to call this my PLs just so I know my colors are going to be consistent. And this is going to be the Ilex from Toro. Whatever. And then I'll do this shift five. You never want to put your color on your lines. May always make sure that your lines are above and you can always see them. All right, so now that'll be clean, good. I notice kind of an anomaly sometimes we have these pieces where you come in here, just select, let me go to that Ilex layer again. And I can go back to the color of the Ilex and just delete that. Okay, control minus. Okay, that's looking good. And we're going to keep on going. So Control O. That was my Alex's. Um, 
Let's bring in the Hamlin one up. Again, I'm going to use my marquee tool and just select what I need. Control C, come back here. Control Shift V. Actually, the line there. Okay, there goes my Hamlin, and I'll do the same thing. Just clicking in the white space, Control Shift I, and coming here, creating a new layer. And we'll say PL, and this is. Hamlin and I'll grab another color. Um, maybe they like a yellow, I don't know. We'll do that for now to see. Um, and I'll kill that one. Just don't need it. Don't sit. Okay. And oh. Yep, bring my Alex's in, media box, same way. Grab these, close this. And these are PL, these are Alex. And I'm gonna go in here and just copy this this time, so I don't have to re keep on typing it, and just kind of come in here and paste that. Go back here, magic wand it, do the invert, and we'll just grab a color. And something like that. So, trees are going there pretty quickly. Keep on going. Joe Pa, I believe I have. Northwind. Autos, I don't think I have yet. Okay. Same thing. Copy. Control Shift to V. These are PL. Auto. Oh. <laughs> Wrong auto. Brain went auto. And I'm also going to copy that too. And just come down here. Paste that in. Go here. Same thing. Control Shift I to invert. Autos. And maybe we'll make that kind of like a. Now, let's see, okay. Looks like I still have a few things missing. Those Joe Pies might need to come in. So, oh, and I believe it's the, no, it's not the Joe Pies. I have Joe Pies, I don't know. It is Joe Pies. So then I'll grab my Joe Pies. And Control Shift V. Joe Pies is PL. Okay, and again, let me just double click it there, copy that, and bring it down here. Whoops, new layer. Then I'll paste it. And go back to Joe Pod W. 
And actually for this, I don't even need to render anything under that because it's underneath the tree anyway, so I won't even worry about rendering that, that Joe Pie. But if you wanted to, you could just drop any color in. So just for the sake of being consistent, Control Shift I. Um, and maybe we kind of put a little bit of color on those. Joe Pie. Okay. And maybe there's one more row of um, another grass. Um, where's my Hamlin? No, I believe I have my Hamlin, don't I? Yeah, it's not the Hamlin. Don't save. We just delete some of these out that I don't need. Save. Don't save. It must be my north wind then that I don't have in here. It's here. Okay. And I'm just gonna grab those. Copy. Bring it up here. Control shift V. And those are gonna be PL. North wind. I'm just gonna bring my title block to the top too, so it's cleaner. Shouldn't make a big difference, but just to be consistent. Okay, and then um, that last one was my my north wind, and I'm gonna copy that and create another one down here. North wind. Okay, go to north wind. W. Control shift I. Whoops, keep on doing that. Control Shift I, and then go to Northwind here. And um, I have a good color like that. And there you go, something like that. Now I notice there's some overlap in there, so I'm just going to go back to that Northwind layer and kind of zoom in. And. Uh, Click those areas. Oops. Make sure you don't kick, click the black. Make sure you just click the color just to clean it up some. Just the areas that it needs to be. Just a little area right there too. Back one. You can just control Z back to go ones. You don't have to select everything again. All right. It's good. And then I'm just going to go back to the color and then hit delete so I have that gap in between it. And I see some more. Let me get rid of those anomalies because it's really standing out now. And just holding shift to go back and delete that. Those little edges. Yeah. Okay, go back to North Wind, delete. All right, so we got our plants kind of rendered in halfway, so it's looking pretty good. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back here as well and um, make sure I'm not missing anything, too. Okay, everything looks good. So I'm going to go back to my AutoCAD and. Um, I'm going to turn. The, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna duplicate the edge layer that we did the first time, um, but this time I'm gonna turn the design extents off because we have one already. So I'm gonna go turn design extents off, and um, I'm gonna turn off my anno labels. I don't need those. Turn those off. Um, I don't need any of my proposed land. Don't need that. And the paving. I don't need the hatch. And I don't need context edge. I don't need that either. And I don't want the striping. Okay, that's all I want. And then I'm going to control P that. And save as PDF. And I'm going to say edges, no design extents. So I know. Come back to Photoshop. Let me kill that one. And 
open. Edges, no design extents. Media box, the same way. Control A, up. Actually, I'm not gonna copy the whole thing. Let me just grab the, the marquee, just the area that I need. Copy that, get rid of that. Don't need that. Um, back to my line work, and where's the design extents, basically. And my edges, I'm just gonna control shift V to put that there, and just get rid of that. Okay, and just delete that actually, and then I'll, this one will become my edges and site furnishing. And I'll bring that above, or actually, that'll work. Let me bring this above this. And actually, let me make sure that my trees, so my, uh, my Zalcoba and that Ilex, are above that. Now you do see some, the tree should be on top of that. Um, what's happening is my, the layers are over top of my color and there shouldn't be any any color in that. So I'm going to go to that edges and click my magic wand and hold shift and just click into those spaces. And then I'm going to do a control or my Mac a command X to cut. And I'm going to go to the color and I'm going to create a layer for that too. I'm just going to create a layer and call it um, um, stone bench and then just control shift V the same way to drop the color and you see the color will be set below the, the trees now. You make sure that your tree layers are um, appropriately uh, layered so like for instance I see that this this is a bigger um, plant than this one is so it should be on top of it so I need to fix that um, that is, and this thing up. I like just need to be above the auto lucans. Okay, that looks good. Everything else looks fine. Um, all right, so let me control S and say that. So now let's make this thing look even better. So that's a quick way to diagram, right? But we can make this look even better. Um, and we can do that by now um, minimizing that, adding overlays, pattern overlays. So, and uh, the same thing for this as well. Let me, before I do that, let's clean that up. Um, so edges and site furnishing, magic wand. Let me go and get those gray areas too. X, same way. And um, these are the um, steel beams or whatever they are. And, uh, Control shift V. All right, and it'll be below it again. Okay, so now that's good. Let's save that. It's, it's nice and clear. And let's minimize the line work. Um, and actually it's giving me a design extent, so. Okay, well good, I don't need that then. I'll get rid of that design extent. I have a dashed one, though, that's fine. All right. So now um, what I can do is add the pattern overlay. So I'm going to go to Google and um, I'm just going to start looking up some seamless pattern overlays. So I'm going into Google, I'm going to images and I'm going to say seamless concrete texture. Okay. Um, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to right click on that and say copy image. I'm going to go back to Photoshop and come up here and um, I'm on top of my, it really doesn't matter, but make sure you're, well, it does matter. Make sure you're on top of the, the highest level um, of your layer hierarchy. Control, I just can paste it and control V. Um, the command or control click on the layer to have it um, selected. I'm going to say edit and define pattern. And I'm going to call this um, sidewalk um, hatch or whatever. And I'm going to control D to let go and then just hit delete because I don't need that anymore. Now I'm going to go to my concrete layer, right? That's that. And I'm going to go to my um, effects and say pattern overlay. I'm going to navigate to the pattern that I just selected. And that was that uh, concrete, basically. And you can also change the scale of it. 
you know, to kind of get that wash that you want. So I want something small like that. It's good. And I want to reduce the opacity so it's just not so not so heavy. And uh, that looks good to me for now. Um, so that's my concrete. So I'm going to keep on going. And I'm going to find something for the mulch. So I'm going to say mulch texture. Make sure it's seamless. And let's say we, we use that. And I'm going to copy the image and go back to Photoshop. Same thing. Put myself on top. Control V. And I want to edit and refine pattern. And I'm just going to call this mulch hatch. And just delete that then. Control D. Really easy. I'm going to my mulch, pattern overlay, that mulch I had in that seems a little bit big to me right now, so I'll reduce the scale of it. Uh, we have to redo it, see we caught that when we did it, let's do that again. Let me bring that last one back, so make sure that you're on top, the top layer, control V, because when we defined it, it caught a piece of the line work, so I'm going to grab that again and then edit. Um, define pattern and then mulch hatch to then we'll just delete that and we'll try that again so we'll go to my mulch layer I'll do the pattern overlay I'll just navigate to this last one now there we go and it should be smooth and I'll just knock that down to make it look like it's the actual scale that it would be there on the ground plane um, Kind of zoom in to see. That looks pretty good to me. All right, so I got that done. So I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna worry about the lawn now. So I'm gonna go to lawn layer. Lawn. Oops. Oh, we got some grass right there in front of us, but it doesn't matter. We'll grab one of these. Um, just pick a grass that that you like. Try to avoid those, though. So you don't want to stamp on it. Don't mess your hatch up, so use that. Um, let's try that grass instead. Okay, there goes one. So I'm just going to copy that. Copy image. Back to Photoshop. Top layer. Control V. Control click. Edit, define pattern, lawn hatch, control D to let go. I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to go to my lawn layer, pattern overlay, um, grass, and kind of zoom in a little bit, just check my scale. Okay, looks good to me. Kind of zoom out. All right, so now we have some grass in there. It's kind of coming together a little bit for us. Um, Control S, definitely save your progress as you go along. I want to find some stone paving, so let me see. Um, stone, seamless texture. That looks good to me. Copy image. Just bring it back to Photoshop. Top control, whoop, control V. Same thing we've been doing. And um, edit, define pattern, and then we'll just call this stone paver hatch. Control D, I'll just delete that because I don't need it anymore. Go back to my stone pavers, do a uh, pattern overlay. And go to that last one and zoom in a little bit. Let's see if we can change the scale. That looks good to me. Okay. Save again. And I'm going to grab it and look for a granite texture too for that. 
Uh, for the stone benches, I'll just grab a texture for that too. One up. Um, say they're gonna be something like that. So I'll um, copy the image, bring it back, Photoshop on the top, Control V, edit, uh, define pattern. This is gonna be granite bench now. Go delete it um, and it's going to be a pattern overlay in the same way. Navigate to the last one we selected. Um, probably need to make that a little bit smaller with the grain. That looks good to me. All right, great. I'm going to let that be. I'm going to let that be. Um, all right, so I'm going to control save that. Now we're kind of just want to look at the drawing, you know. It's important now, we can make these plants photorealistic, but in my experience, things get lost. So I think it's good to kind of blend the two where you can have photorealistic ground plant elements. And then your plants, you kind of keep diagrammatic. We are going to make these look better, though. Um, so now that I have that, uh, let me go to my Zalcovo. And maybe I change the color of this. So I can go um, Adjustments. Hue and saturation. Make sure I select this icon to, so it's only um, applying the effect to the layer directly below it. And you can begin to tweak, you know, your tree colors to maybe get something um, that you that you want uh, that might be more appropriate for the for the site. Um, so maybe something like that. With a kind of copy, and I'm breaking rules. Typically, the, you get darker the higher up you go. Um, but I don't want to get in that dark. We're gonna play with that a little bit. So that looks okay to me. Um, and if you actually, if you like the effect that you have, you can always just Control E to merge it. Um, so now it's just that color without the effect being applied. So I don't, I can't turn it on and off. I like the color though. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is, is apply a uh, inner glow to it. And this is a quick way of um, just adding some depth to your trees. So I'm going to go darken. I'm going to click the um, swatch icon. Then I'm going to use my dropper and select that green that I have. And I'm going to pull down and just get a darker tone of it. And I'm going to do the size and kind of bring that in a little bit. And as I do that, you'll notice that I have a kind of a dark edge that begins to appear to give it some depth. Well, I want that. It looks good. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is also drop a shadow. Um, so I'm going to give it some size and some spread. Give it some distance because it's a tree. It's bigger. Okay. And I can soften that maybe. Just kind of fuzz it up a little bit. Okay, maybe I'll reduce the opacity of that a little bit as well. Okay, that looks good to me. Okay, so now I have some shadows on that. Now it's starting to look like something. Um, I'm gonna save that. Make sure it's this is my PO. And these are. Um, Cobo. Save that again. So I'm going to go through and do the same thing for each of the plant materials just to kind of give them some depth, especially the ones that are more prevalent. So I'm going to go here, and I'm actually going to pull the shadow effects from here. I'm going to grab the shadow. I'm hovering over the shadow. I'm going to hold Alt and uh, left click and hold that and just drag its effect into that, and you'll see it projected. And then the shadow, I don't want to be as deep because it's not the plant's not as large. I'm going to kind of bring that back some there uh, with the distance too. And then we get the spread to come out a little bit. Okay, that looks good for that to me. And um, I also want to do the effect though, inner glow. It's going to be different. I can't apply the inner glow because it's a different color. So I'm going to grab that color and just come down. 
Um, sorry about there. And and make sure that I darken. Let's just bring the choke in some. But I want to have that pushed to give it some depth. Bring the choke back even more. I'll bring it a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Just playing with the effects. Um, keep on going. And next time, I, this time I'm actually going to try to drag both the effects. So I'm going to grab the the shadow and grab the inner glow. I'm going to select the inner glow for these um, though, and I'm going to change the color. I'm going to grab that color, and I'm going to get a little bit darker there. Yeah, and also it's they're smaller plants, so I'm not going to just reduce that some. That looks good to me. And I'll do the same thing again for my north wind. Okay, and the shadow for the north wind obviously will have to change because they're smaller. And my inner glow here will obviously have to change. Let me. Take this up, cancel that, take the size way back so I can sample the color. Um, it's going to be that color. And oh. And I want that color. I'm gonna go darker. And actually, let me turn off, let me take off the inner glow. See, sometimes it gets funny like that, so sometimes it's best just to apply it itself. So I'm also gonna apply the inner glow here. And let me just sample my color and get a little darker. And let me just darken and uh, bring it in some, just give it a little pop. That looks good. I like the shadow effect for that for my Alex's though, it'll be fun. And I'm gonna grab the inner glow effects, it's very close to that. I grab this color. I don't want to get darker there. And I just won't bring that back so much. All right. Keep it going. Almost done. The Joe Pies really don't matter. Um, but I'll, I won't mess with those PLs. Got to get these. So that shadow would be the same. And then I'll do an inner glow here. Sampling that color. Pretty easy. It's making it a little bit darker. And we'll darken that. And run the size up a little bit. Choke up just to give it a little something. Okay, and maybe we make that even a little bit darker. So it really kind of pops on it. All right, looks good to me. I'm uh, missing any one of them, but bup, bup, all looks good. Okay, so now we have that, it looks pretty good. Um, not quite done, now let me drop a shadow. Let me zoom out too. And we can tweak these colors too. Um, So I have that. And let me go full screen. I'm hitting F to just go full screen so I can pan more easily. Okay, now I'm driving. Got that. And what I want to do is I need want to drop a shadow on that bench as well. So I want to drop a shadow. I'll put the distance up on a little bit. <clears throat> Of 
cool. And then also on the um, screen. Leave that. Okay, cool. All right, so we have those pieces there. Um, and that's that could be your diagram, but we can play with this some more. We can tweak the color so it looks better. Um, what you can do is click on your plants. And I'm actually going to group all my plants together to, to make this effect the same. So I'm going to put my plants in the same group. So this is plants. Oops. Plants. And I'm going to go in the fill, and I'm just going to reduce kind of the fill so it's semi-transparent, so I can kind of you know see my lines. It's really important that we can see the lines, because this is more of a diagram than anything else, OK? And when I zoom in, you know, I want to be able to see those lines really crisply. OK, just my zooms on my mouse. Okay, there we go. This thing is tripping. So everything it needs right there. Okay, so now we have this thing kind of semi laid out. Um, I can tweak the colors. So that was my colors for that. Now my stone papers. I like all that. So I'm just gonna I'm begin to rasterize these. I'm gonna right click on them. Right click on. Right click on the name of it and say rasterize layer style. And it's going to make that pattern overlay a part of it. So I'm going to rasterize layer style for all those because I like that effect on all of them. Rasterize layer style. Rasterize layer style. Now we can begin to, to tweak these and um, change them if we want to. So for instance, the concrete sidewalk I might want lighter. Um, I can go to my adjustments layers and go to my hue and saturation. You know, and then begin to to play with these things where I can, you know, there it goes. It's just running a little slow. Yeah, well, I can begin to tweak and kind of play with the colors of this. I might make it a little bit lighter. Cool. Okay, bring that back. Um, I can go to my stone pavers and I'm going to do the same thing where I'll, I'll do an adjustment and human saturation. Um, and say, for instance, I just, you know, I want to change the level of saturation on the, on the stone. So maybe they like that and maybe they're lighter. Kind of match better though. The sidewalk. They're not so prominent there and lighten them up a little bit. Again, you can make this what you want it to be. Unless you have specific instruction from the designer to make it what they want it to be. Um, in this case, you can kind of play with it. So that looks good. Um, again, you can play at the color of the stone benches. You can make those darker. I actually like that. I think that's fine. Um, the steel band color. It's not really the steel band, it's actually the um, green screen. The bands I'm going to leave alone, they're white, and they're on, that's fine. Um, the green screen though, I did put a color on, so I can actually drop a shadow on that too. Um, you just do distance. You know, maybe it's a little crisper. There. Now the the thing about dropping shadows here is they're not you know they're not really actual. You're just playing with shapes to try to get the diagram to pop. To get better shadows on a diagram, I would recommend going to to SketchUp and then um, exporting your your plan view from SketchUp into to Photoshop so you'll have actual um, shadows or more more realistic shadowing of your elements. Sorry about the panning, you all. I have the configuration of my mouse. I'm still trying to get used to. Um, okay, so that's it. So I'm going to control save that. And again, I can begin to tweak this thing a little bit more. I can add, um, I think what's helpful to add 
is entourage so I can get like um, plan view people for instance um, or maybe we can do top view people there we go that's better so we kind of get a, a you know try to get a, a decent one and um, We'll grab these just for demonstration purposes. So I can grab this nice white background so it's easy to crop. I'm going to copy the image. Um, I can bring it back to Photoshop. Um, we'll do it in color. And the layer's doing nothing. So color, and then me just Control V. And that'll come in. And I want to scale this Control T. And I'm going to try to use my scale here, my graphic scale. It's helpful to kind of. Figure out the size of what these people would actually be. I'm using references that, of that guy about his shoulders being about two, a half, foot and a half, two foot wide. Okay. Uh, maybe he's, maybe they're just a smidgen smaller. Okay, that's good enough. Let me zoom out. Okay, so I got those people. It's a white background. I hit W for the magic wand and just getting rid of that white. Looks like there's some white right there too, still. Just so they'll be isolated. I never this thing actually works. It's dragon. Okay, shouldn't be. I'm gonna go ahead and close my AutoCAD up here. Thing starts doing that. I don't think we need this anymore. I'll just save that and then Control W just to close it. Free up some of the processing for Photoshop. Um, okay, seems to help some. Okay, so now I have uh, my, my people. Now I'm just gonna carve them, kind of carve them around. I'm just gonna call that layer people. Uh, it's good to put people in because it helps give the site um, scale. So I'm just, I use the um, polyagonal uh, selection tool and now I'm just moving the guy. Uh, well maybe he's walking in. Control D to let go, polyagonal tool again. And uh, create a conversation with this guy. He'll be over here. I hit Control T is a transform and you get this icon to have it rotate. I'm just holding click the left click and kind of rotating him around where I want. And then say enter when I have it there, control D. And grab the polyagonal tool again. I'm gonna have them talking to this girl here. And they're like talking there. Control D. Person kind of walking through. Kind of headed down the path. Apply and Control D. Um, maybe I'll just keep all these folks here. Just rotate them so like talking. Enter. And keep it going. Maybe she's coming into the space. I have it just rotated. And she's across the line. Control D. Okay, so now I have some people in there. It kind of gives it some, you know, some scale. <clears throat> Maybe move these people off to the side a little bit. 
maybe this group is kind of over here. It's kind of how people would be. And I can just reduce the opacity of those a little bit too. Um, just knock it down some so they're kind of transparent. <clears throat> I will drop a shadow on those too. It won't be a deep shadow, but it'll be a little bit of a shadow so we can kind of see. I'll let that blur a little bit. And maybe what I want to do instead of um, dropping the opacity is just drop the fill. So I can kind of keep that shadow there. I do want that shadow though. There you go. Just kind of drop it back, and the design should be the primary goal. Okay, and then um, let me Control O again, and I need to get my labels. I'm just going to Control A, and copy. I'm going to hit F to toggle back to get to my screens. Go back here, and. It's actually going to be the line working away, so can control shift V. Um, okay. And let me just uh, highlight my labels again. I have many of them. Um, control shift I and just delete uh, the extra line work. And there you have it. So you have your labels there, your plans done, some people in there for context, and a plan view. Now, if you wanted to use that for a, a presentation poster, um, you would simply let me save this first. And you could also play with the grass colors, and this might be still a little bit dark, but um, let me save this, and I'll show you that. Kind of get rid of that layer. Don't save. Okay, so that looks good. Just moving. You actually working with me? I'll go back to my full screen, control D. Okay. I might want to go to my how my line work. To like my lawn layer, reduce the opacity a little bit. So it's a little bit lighter. Same thing with the mulch. You might want to be a little bit lighter so it's not so heavy on the page. There you go. Then what I would recommend, um, once you have that done, you have your colors and your line work, you can kind of minimize. I select both of them, um, hit V for my move tool, hold Alt and drag it, it'll make a copy. And then I'll control E and what that does, it merges everything. So it's merging everything that I just created there. So I'll create a flat image of it, a flat version. Oh, but before I do that, oh, let me cancel that out. No, that's right. Yeah, convert. Yeah, because we have the white background. I was worried about the white being attached to it, but the white is separate. So it's going to give us this version of it where we have our labels and everything kind of there together, um, real cleanly. And it allows you to add it to other boards. And what we'll do is we'll just when this is done processing, I'll show you. We'll just trim the um, title block off, so you'll just have this this information on a transparent background. All right, so we have that. I'm going to turn those off. And on this one now, again, I'm just going to delete the that information. And you'll see now that we have, to turn that off, a diagram that you're ready to plop in um, to a layout um, model or an InDesign sheet or a Photoshop poster that you're creating for your final piece. So once you have your drawing complete, you want to um, export it as, as a PDF. So I'm going to go File. I'm going to say Save As. PDF or a JPEG is fine. You can be able to combine out either, but you can do a, just save it as a JPEG as a matter of fact. Call it a JPEG, put it in the appropriate folder. Um, on my desktop, I'm gonna go here. Um, finish pieces and I'm gonna say plan view diagram. And I'm gonna save it there. There you go. I'm also going to save a PNG 
I'm going to turn off the um, background. I'm going to save, save it as a PNG so it'll uh, maintain the transparency. Um, so I have that as well. Um, desktop there. And I'm putting it in finished pieces. And it's going to be plan view diagrams and PNG. <clears throat> There you go. So once you save that, you'll be able to combine that into your final PDF with your self-assessment rubric.